tonight's special assignment, Mark Jordan reports from the city. From the nightly news to documentary, Mark Jordan has a track record for delivering exclusives, exposés and engaging TV. It's a life-saving necessity, as Mark Jordan discovers. From punchy storytelling on BBC's one show to prime time documentary. From its birth to the desert graveyard, cradle to grave, this is the story of the 747. From flying high to deep undercover. He promised 10 year olds fresh and clean. He said I could take my pick. So $40 for the little girls and $40 for this girl. Hello. To a man who had the fortitude to seek out the worst in human behavior and bring it to light. Mark Jordan of ITN World News. Correspondent Mark Jordan has reported from around the globe for ITN and ITV's Tonight with Trevor McDonald. He has awards to prove it. An RTS commendation as foreign correspondent. Honored at the One World Media Awards for outstanding coverage of the developing world. A gold medal winner at the New York TV Festival. And in Hollywood, best new series at the Genesis Awards. They call it Sodom and Gomorrah slum in Ghana. Hazardous electrical waste dumped as far as the eye can see. Who'd expect our throwaways to end up here? But look where it's from. Our banks, our councils, our hospitals, even a police force. It is hard to imagine that back home in Britain, you can be fined for not sorting out your recycling box properly. And yet somehow, tons and tons of our waste is just being dumped here in Ghana. And it's all because of Brexit. London's first time buyers are a bit like poor old Goldilocks. When the market's too hot, they can't keep up. Too cool and they get scared. It's really just right. For several years now, I've been reporting on the mad world of London property. Tiny door. The greed for big profits in small places. There was just four separate adults in here. I've seen it all. This is an extension. They built it around a tree. So why are you going to break my door down? Why am I going to break your door? Because I think I'm Superman. I've witnessed the slum landlords and challenged the fraudsters. Is there nothing you'd like to say? You pleaded guilty. But tonight, richer pickings than any TV property guru ever dreamt of. I'm about to show you how shrewd landlords are buying up modest suburban family homes, packing them with the homeless, quadrupling the rent, and charging us, the taxpayers. Welcome to a world where Zone 6 family homes turn into five tiny flats, divide and profit. So this one room housing benefit is paying £980 a month. It's just like being in a, a cupboard. It's not that wide, look, I can't touch. I'm here on the toilet, my elbows in the sink and my feet are in the shower. London gets the lion's share, us up here gets the roll. North of the London Citadel, the kingdom grows restless. Welcome to Game of Trains. A capital at odds with the north. Has London swallowed up an outrageous dragon-sized share of rail investment? It's just always London, London, London. Just because we're in the north doesn't mean we deserve less of a standard. Does London care? There's always a jealousy about the capital. I don't think anyone in London's got a moment to think about anyone else in the rest of the UK. The beleaguered House of May faces a defiant new king in the north. Nobody can tell me that spending billions more on London is the highest investment priority uh, for our country. As battle looms, I'm trying to make sense of this north-south feud. It's an American war that ended nearly 40 years ago. But in Vietnam, they claim the casualties keep coming. Birth defects plague the country. They call them the children of Agent Orange. We have a big project in Da Nang in central Vietnam. 
uh, which has got the highest incidence of congenital deformity in the world, and that's thought to, to be as a result of Agent Orange used during the Vietnam War. In the early 70s, America's own agriculture department reported that dioxin used in Agent Orange produced a significant potential to increase birth defects. But by then, they'd been spraying it across Vietnam for years. Can you do high five? You see them turn up on the back of a motorbike coming from miles and miles and miles and they'll have heard of a hope, just that tidy flicker that maybe this was somebody that can help our child. So they will take every penny or dong that they've got to get there and they'll sit and wait. met little children on the doorstep of the A&E department. They got there, they heard we were there and waited. It's heartbreaking, but also then the system kind of starts to work. In two weeks, Facing the World have performed 20 operations. They're heading home. From its birth to the desert graveyard, cradle to grave, this is the story of the 747. The very last 747 to fly passengers for an American carrier parked up in the boneyard this year. This is where uh, the whales come to rest when they're done with their job. It's just amazing the size of them. I'm on a voyage to uncover how this giant ever got off the ground. So right now, I'm in the wing of a 747. I've been tracking the pioneers that made that very first flight. So this is you on the first flight? Yes. I flew some of the test flights on this airplane. No one said it would be easy. This uh, had all the earmarks of the Titanic. When we're at our best, that's what we can achieve. Mark Jordan, and that's all from us today. We'll be back with more from our correspondents on Saturday morning. Do join us. Goodbye.